Something just happened above our heads that could change everything beneath our feet. Earth is now exposed to a high-speed solar wind from a massive, equator-crossing coronal hole. Its negative magnetic charge directly coupling with our planet's own field. The result, a collapse in solar wind density to less than one particle per cubic centimeter. A threshold scientists track for sudden catastrophic earthquakes. Over the past 90 days, every time this invisible jet passed by, four megaquakes shook remote corners of the Earth. If the next devastating earthquake is being written by the sun, are we alert enough to read the warning signs? The real story behind Earthquake Alert Solar Storm Triggers 8.0 plus Quakes begins where the sunlight ends. Stefan burns here. Let's look straight at the sun's surface using extreme ultraviolet imagery from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. A dark, gaping region stretches right across the solar equator. That's a trans-equatorial coronal hole. Unlike the bright, turbulent patches we usually associate with sunspots or flares, this region is cooler, less dense, and threaded by open magnetic field lines. Those open lines act like cosmic highways, letting charged particles escape the sun's grip at high speeds. What makes this particular coronal hole so important is its position. Sitting directly on the solar equator, it lines up perfectly for its outflow to reach Earth. Now, the magnetic field coming from this hole is negative, meaning its polarity is opposite to most of Earth's own field. That matters because negative solar wind couples more efficiently with our planet's magnetic shield. When these two fields connect, energy and particles stream directly into our near-Earth environment. SDO images show the hole's boundaries shifting and expanding as the sun rotates, and each time it faces Earth, a new blast of high-speed solar wind is launched straight toward us. This isn't just a minor feature. Its size and direct aim make it a key player in the chain of events now unfolding. Solar wind density readings from ACE and DS-CoVR have plunged below one particle per cubic centimeter, less than a tenth of what's typical for Earth's near-space environment. That means the constant stream of charged particles pressing against our planet's magnetic shield has thinned to a whisper. In this rare state, Earth is wrapped in what scientists call an electromagnetic vacuum. With dynamic pressure at its lowest, the magnetosphere expands outward, stretching like a balloon relieved of its weight. The usual buffer between space and ground weakens. Some researchers propose that this sudden drop in external pressure could have consequences far below our feet. The theory goes like this. When the sun's push vanishes, tectonic plates, already under immense stress, might find it just a bit easier to slip. It's a stress-release hypothesis, speculative, but supported by intriguing timing in past seismic records. These voids don't happen often, but when they do, the stage is set for something unusual. The data trace, a flat line on the density graph, signals a pause in the sun's influence. The question lingers. When the pressure drops above, what cracks open below? In the last 90 days, four major earthquakes have struck along a narrow window of time, each one landing in a different corner of the Pacific Ring. We're talking about the 7.4 in the Philippines, a series of 7.0 plus events in Papua New Guinea, and that cluster in the Drake Passage, all within a pattern that stands out against the usual seismic background. Statistically, global earthquake catalogs expect a handful of magnitude 7 or higher events every few months. But when you map the timing of these quakes against the arrival of high-speed solar wind from the same trans-equatorial coronal hole, something interesting happens. A superposed epic analysis, lining up earthquake times with space weather events, shows a measurable bump. The effect size for M7 plus quakes rises above random expectation with a p-value under 0.05. That means this cluster isn't just a product of chance. 
at least by standard statistical tests. Still, seismologists caution that clustering can happen naturally, and the world's faults don't always play by our rules. One expert puts it this way, we see patterns in the data, but the Earth is a noisy system. Coincidence is always a possibility. Even so, the numbers suggest this isn't your average run of seismic activity. The question remains, what's driving the timing? And could it really be connected to that solar wind stream? Now let's talk about the quake that has everyone's attention. The magnitude 7.6 in the Drake Passage on November 17th, 2024. USGS records pin its epicenter near 56 degrees south, 26 degrees west, just north of the Antarctic Convergence. It struck at a depth of about 15 kilometers, with over 150 aftershocks fanning out along the subduction zone. The main shock waveform shows a classic thrust fault event. No unusual signatures, no confirmed flashes or luminous precursors in satellite or ground-based data. But the timing is what raises eyebrows. Within days, seismic monitors picked up a major event on the far side of the globe, near the Kamchatka Peninsula. While some claim a magnitude 8.8, .8, the largest confirmed recent quake in that region is a 7.7, .7, with its own deep, thrust-style rupture and a swarm of aftershocks. The antipodal point of the Drake Passage quake falls in the North Pacific, not directly under Kamchatka, but close enough to fuel speculation about a planetary balancing act. The idea is that when one side slips, the other answers, like weights on a cosmic scale. Seismologists remain skeptical. There's no physical mechanism or statistical proof for antipodal megaquake pairs, and no evidence of stress transfer at this scale. Still, the coincidence of large ruptures on nearly opposite sides of the planet, so close together in time, is hard to ignore. It's the kind of pattern that keeps researchers and sky watchers alike searching for meaning in the noise. Is Earth finding its balance, or are we just seeing random echoes in a restless crust? A quick look at the solar system's calendar shows something rare. Saturn and Neptune closing in on a conjunction, their closest approach set for June 20th, 2025. That's a once every 36 year alignment with both planets nearly overlapping in the sky, just a fraction of a degree apart. While mainstream science finds little physical consequence in such cosmic choreography, these moments have always sparked curiosity about subtle influences from above. Meanwhile, comet trackers are logging steady activity, about 30 new comets per year from SOHO and another 20 or so from ground-based surveys. There's no documented surge or true swarm in 2024 or 2025, but the inner solar system remains lively, with sun grazers and fragment chains passing close to the sun. Now, the real action is on the sun's surface. In early May 2025, sunspot numbers doubled in just two days, leaping from 62 on May 4th to 127 on May 6th. Each sunspot is a magnetic hurricane, twisted fields strong enough to dwarf Earth's own shield, sometimes unleashing flares or high-speed wind. When the count jumps that fast, it's a sign of deep unrest in the solar interior. This isn't just a number on a chart, it's a signal that our star is stirring, setting the stage for whatever comes next. Geomagnetic storms don't just light up the sky, they drive electric fields deep underground. When a solar wind stream hits, time-varying magnetic fields sweep across the planet. That motion induces electric fields at the surface, sometimes reaching 1 to 10 volts per kilometer, measured during the strongest events. Those fields aren't just numbers. They push currents through the crust, especially along faults laced with water or graphite. As these currents flow, they create subtle but real mechanical stresses. Models estimate Coulomb stress changes from 10 to 1,000 pascals, far below what's needed to break a fault outright, but enough to matter if the system is already close to failure. 
Laboratory tests on granite and quartz show piezoelectric effects, but the stress changes are tiny, fractions of a percent compared to tectonic forces. Still, in a critical state, even a nudge could tip the balance. Now, here's where it gets tricky. All of these calculations depend on having up to the second data from satellites parked at the L1 point, like ACE and Diesco VAR. But in May, a major shockwave passed by Earth undetected. Solar Orbiter, the only craft with a clear view, was 10 degrees above the ecliptic, missing the main event. For hours, ground teams had no warning, no real-time readings, just a sudden spike in magnetic activity. That's a blind spot. If another shockwave rides in under the radar, we might not see it coming until the ground itself starts to move. In 2024, Satellite data confirmed a drop in solar wind density below one particle per cubic centimeter, an event accompanied by a record surge in sunspot counts from 60 to 130 within 48 hours. During the same 90-day window, four magnitude 7 plus earthquakes struck regions including the Drake Passage and Kamchatka, all following high-speed streams from a trans-equatorial coronal hole. While this temporal overlap is statistically unusual, current USGS and NASA records show no proven mechanism directly linking solar activity to seismic triggers. The missed solar shockwave, detected only by Solar Orbiter, highlights ongoing gaps in space weather monitoring. Scientific consensus remains divided. Some researchers see only coincidence while others urge further study of solar-induced electromagnetic effects on Earth's crust. What is clear is that space weather continues to affect our planet in complex ways, with many variables still unmeasured. The data urge caution and vigilance, reminding us that even now, much about the Sun's impact on Earth remains unresolved.